Welcome back to the Swamp Fox Optics YouTube channel. And today we are going over, like I said already, how to start creating dope for your rifle. What is dope? Dope is pretty simple. Stands for data on previous engagements. Essentially, we're taking data that we've collected with previous experiences with our rifle to start painting a picture of what our rifle is gonna do in future experiences and future situations. I wanna quickly highlight the word engagements in the dope acronym. Two points that I wanna hit is one, it's engagements, not calculations. So engagement is a real thing that happens. It's a physical live fire experience that you have with your rifle. And two, it's plural. So it's not just one time you've done it, it's uh, multiple times you've done it. So the more we do this, the more accurate our data is gonna be and the clearer that picture will be in terms of what our rifle is gonna do in future uh, engagements. What DOPE doesn't stand for is data on previous calculation. When researching and writing the script for this video, one of the things I saw all over the place and in almost every video I clicked on was this super simple formula for creating dope. And that was twofold. It was one, going to the range, setting up a chronograph and running however many rounds you wanna run on your chrono, getting a baseline, and then two, leaving the range, going back to the computer, tossing all that info into a ballistic calculator and boom, there's your dope, you're good to go. I couldn't stop scratching my head at this concept because it didn't make sense that we would go dump 10 to 20 rounds down range without a care in the world where they go. And then we would leave the range to go sit at a computer and have the computer tell us what our bullet is actually gonna do. I realized that I've created somewhat of a straw man argument. Um, I kind of painted a caricature of the videos that are out there, the broad range of videos that are out there, and not all of them are bad and not all of them are uh, as simple as that. The truth is a chronograph is actually a really, really important tool. It tells us what our true muzzle velocity is and it can start to begin to tell us what is actually happening at the muzzle and that can be really helpful when we're truing our dope and really refining what exactly is happening with that round and that barrel on those conditions. So I have no intention of downplaying the significance of a chronograph and it is something that we are gonna be implementing in the follow-up video to this as we get more in depth about dope, but we're facing the fact that the reality is most people don't have a, a chronograph or don't have easy access to one. So today we are gonna operate under that assumption that we don't have a chronograph and we're gonna start to build dope the old fashioned way with a rifle, some ammo and being out on the range. Step one to this whole process is getting a really solid zero. I have zeroed this rifle is one we're using today at 100 yards. Uh, it's pretty conducive to 100 yard zero. So that's what I went with. You can do whatever zero you want. You could do a 5200, you could do your 36, 300. You pick and you just realize you might have to somewhat tailor uh, this test to your zeroing distances and the distances that you want to get data at, but that's totally okay. There are tons of options out there for you. So we're gonna throw up my zeroing group. Um, we're gonna confirm that here in a second. Um, but we're gonna throw up the zero group uh, so you can see what we're working with as a baseline. We are shooting, if I haven't already mentioned, Federal Premium uh, 73 grain um, bullets with burger bullets in them. So it, the round has been good to us um, and it is grouping well. The second step is gonna be walking our target out to 200 yards. This is gonna be the, where we really start to see what our bullet's gonna do past our zero distance. And if your target is pretty shot up, I'd recommend at this point to swap it. It can be really important that we can get good reads on where these rounds are impacting on the target. If there's a lot of uh, miscellaneous rounds from zeroing or, or whatever have you. Uh, probably a good idea to get a new target up so we have a fresh slate and you can really get to uh, see exactly where these impacts are landing because that'll be really important when we actually look at how far they have dropped from where our point of aim has been. You can decide however many rounds you wanna shoot in your groups. Um, we're shooting five today at each distance and I would recommend going no fewer than five. The reality is, is you can shoot a three round group, shoot a great three round group and be like, man, look at that. That's a you know half a away or less gun and that's really cool. But the reality is when you start adding that fourth, fifth and even up to 10th round, it's gonna get a little bit bigger um, and that might hurt our egos a little bit. But the reality is I wanna know really what my gun's capable of and shooting five and 10 round group is going to give us a clearer picture of what our gun is capable of doing when it comes to precision. And ultimately I think that's just gonna give us better data to work off of. Step three is just repeating step two at every distance that you wanna gather data for. For us, that's gonna be 100, 200, and 300, at least for this preliminary video as we start to build uh, our dope for some of these rifles. That might change for you, like I said earlier. So you set the target at the distance that you want to know where that bullet's gonna be. Repeat step two as many times as you feel is necessary to build that data on your gun. The last pro tip I have for you real quick is make sure you have a good amount of space underneath your point of aim on your target. The bullet might drop more or less than you think it's going to and it'd really suck if you know your bullet's dropping a little bit more than you think at three or 400 yards and now they're off the target and we're not gathering that data like we want. So what I set up is a nice long cardboard backer with the target towards the top. Don't think I'm gonna need all of it but it's good to have that just in case it drops more than I think. So that way, even though I don't have a target down there, I have empty, plain cardboard where I can still see my hits.
All right, if you're gonna follow along with this process so you can do it yourself, you're gonna need a few things to get set up. And the first of those things is gonna be decent ammunition. So because we don't have a chronograph and because we don't know what our velocity is at the muzzle, we're gonna to have to find some decent ammunition that's gonna give us a little bit of consistency. Later on, we are gonna be able to get a rough idea of, of a more accurate reading of our velocity at the muzzle. But for now, all we need is just a decent ammunition of your choice, gonna hopefully perform consistently for you. And uh, today our pick is Federal Premium Gold Medal um, 73 grain uh, 223. Um, it's open tip match bullet from Berger. And uh, this has grouped well for me in zeroing. So um, it should function pretty good for what we need it for today. Number two, what you're gonna need is a range. Because we are, are live fire shooting, and the further out you can go, the better data you're gonna get. So, so the longer you can go, the better. That's gonna you know, be the most important thing really uh, for this particular type of information. You actually have to shoot to get it. And so having a longer range is gonna benefit you more. Um, but at the end of the day, all you need is as long of a range as you want data for. So we are on a 300 yard range right now, um, doing this at one, two and 300 yards. And so we will get data out to 300 yards. Last but not least, you're gonna need a rifle and a stable shooting position. We're looking for consistency here, consistency in the human element. So um, I'm going prone today because that's just a very, very stable way to shoot. It's gonna allow me to be as consistent as possible and try as my best to remove as much of the human error element as possible. So, okay, quick little note on the rifle we're using today. Um, we are working with our Warhawk 2-10. This is a build that you may or may not have seen on the channel already. Gonna be a good little setup for this, set up for more of a precision application. Uh, we've got a suppressor, we've got a mod tack suppressor shield on there and we're kind of shooting a high volume of rounds here. So this is gonna help us uh, eliminate whatever um, heat mirage we get off the top of the suppressor um, with a more magnified optic. So um, all that being said, you're gonna need good ammunition, a range and a nice stable shooting position and you will be set up for success in this little thing here. So let's get to shooting. Confirm. Shoot our first group, so this should be point of aim, point of impact. Um, and then we'll get to the drop ones as we move the target further out. But for now, it's gonna send five rounds at uh, this here target and see, get a good confirmation. Our zero's good and our grouping is good. Trying to have a good time. Uno más. Not awful, not the best group in the world, but it'll still work for what we needed to do. A little confirmation and uh, we will throw our target over to 200 yards next and um, see how much these bolts fall. Target is now at 200, um, same point of aim. Tommy will be kind enough to throw a little graphic on there so you know that I'm shooting at the same spot I did before. Um, and we're just gonna see where these want to go. Hopefully we'll get a good read on the bullet dropping. I didn't feel 100% confident in that trigger pull, but I don't think it'll be terrible. Let's see. That one was better. That one was good. One more. All right. That is five rounds at 200. We are clear and going cold. Let's go look. So if you can see that camera B, um, shot I thought I pulled and then still actually just as tight of a group as I did at 100, which means I just could have pulled the trigger better, but 
It's all right, we'll move it back. Okay, such a flattering angle with me. Okay, so we are at 300 now. Um, gonna put some rounds down there. Sorry, Dad. <sighs> Fairly certain I threw that one. Um. That one I felt better about. That's five. Hopefully I'm not disappointed at that group. We shall see. Yeah, I don't know what I was expecting, but this is better than whatever it was. So we have a flyer down here, what we could call a flyer. So we'll probably use this as our baseline for our data. Um, but that really is not as bad as it, as it could have been. So pretty decent-ish grouping there. Two rounds right there. So. All right, so we pulled our target off the range of 300. So now we can see we've got three discernible groups, which is good, right? Um, we have our group at 100, a little high, but I was shooting from a lower elevation than I zeroed from. So even that little bit could make this difference. That's okay. We're still gonna get good, some good data. We have our second group at 200 here, right? I had a little flyer. I felt that when I called it when I pulled it, but we're still, you know, maybe a little off windage wise, but elevation is okay here. And so it's still gonna be good data for us ultimately. And then our third group down here at 300. So obviously it started dropping a little bit more. I also called a flyer out of that group and I'm gonna guess it's that one. You sure about that? Because we have a good set of four here for elevation, we're probably gonna uh, go with that for our little calculations here. And again, this is all super rough, but again, we're just getting a basic understanding of our dope. Just in case you didn't already know, our, my point of aim was gonna be center of that, that yellow circle. Obviously that circle got a lot smaller the further out we got. So I'm gonna make a couple of marks here. In the center of this group, I'm gonna put a little line. That's gonna be like our zero baseline and then center of this going to put a line there as well and then here i'm going to put a mark kind of where these two rounds touched here as my very rough idea for 300. so next step now that i have these three lines is i am just going to measure the difference in inches um, between my zero to two and my zero to three so i'm not trying to Try not to block the camera, but you can look at the back of my head for a second. All right, so we are almost dead on at three inches here. Make this a little bit longer. I've never gone this far on a tape measure before. Tape at the start there. And then down here, we are looking at 12 and a half. We'll call it 12 and a half. Now what we have here, based off of this gun, this ammo, and these conditions is roughly a three inch drop at 200 yards and roughly a 12 and a half inch drop at 300 yards. So now that we have a very preliminary understanding of what's happening, we've got some live fire testing and a good idea of what our gun's gonna do at 100, 200, and 300 yards, we're gonna head back to the office, add in some more tools and start to paint that picture of what is really happening at distance. All right, we are now finally at the point where we are going to actually use a little bit of the data we calculated and use some of the data from the box ammunition we have, throw it into a ballistics calculator and see how stuff is gonna stack up. Real quick, I know this was two seconds ago for you, but it was a little bit longer for us. We got back to the office and we re-measured these increments, um, just kind of our drop. So a little bit more accurate. Uh, we have about 3.25 inches of drop at 200 yards. And we actually have about 13 inches of drop at 300. So we're trying to be as accurate as we can. We've got a little bit better measurements we're, we're gonna use. In our ballistics calculator, I'm using the Hornady ballistic calculator. And a couple of things that we're gonna be throwing into this software is what comes off of the box of ammunition itself. So the ballistic coefficient can typically be found on the box, that either the G1 or the G7. You'll see those old numbers by the numbers. So it's important that if you're using a ballistic calculator that is using the G1 formula that you put the 
um, ballistic coefficient that is found next to the G1 and it could screw it up if you use the wrong one. And then the other thing that we are gonna use from that box of ammo is the rated muzzle velocity. So this isn't always 100% accurate, but out of a 16 inch barrel and a suppressor, it's not unlikely to think that we could get 2,800 feet per second. We are going to use that as well. And then in the ballistics calculator, it allows us to put a lot more data in there. And some of that data is gonna be the grain weight of the bullet, like I already mentioned, the muzzle velocity and the ballistic coefficient. And then what it also lets us do is, is put in some info like the temperature uh, that it was outside while we were shooting, the altitude, the humidity, and, and those are all important factors because that can affect how the bullet is going to travel. And so you can see all that data that, that I just talked about, ballistic coefficient, velocity, grain weight, um, what drag function we're using, and then how far our, our range is that we're shooting, or we want data for at least. In here as well, I have 9,000 feet, because that's about where we were shooting at. Um, I think we're actually a little bit higher than that, but 9,000 is a good average. It was about 50 degrees, and we had about 60% humidity the day we were shooting. So all that data is in there, and we have calculated now a a little dope chart based off of just the data alone that shows us results that are pretty close to what we found uh, in practice as well, right? So now that we have our data that we pulled from our ballistic calculator based off of the data that we had while we were shooting and then the actual in real life data that we got from shooting, we can see that the data is close, but it's not perfectly overlapping and that is 100% okay because the reality is this is gonna be the most accurate way to figure out what my rifle is gonna do at that specific point in time under those conditions. The ballistic calculator data is gonna help us build a better picture of what's gonna happen at distances that we might not have measured. And so ultimately what we are doing, and I cannot stress this enough, is just starting to build a foundation upon which we will take more data and more information to build a really, really clear picture of what our rifles are gonna do ultimately when we're shooting long range. And so I can't stress this enough. It is like the license plate on the truckload of data gathering that we wanna to do to try and know exactly how our rifle performs under the variety of conditions that we might find ourselves in. The last thing I'm gonna do with my ballistic calculation uh, here is, is I have the 400 and the 500 yards also measured out. So I can now pretty confidently say that, that these drops at 400 and 500 yards are hopefully gonna be pretty accurate. And in the next video in this little series, we are going to actually plot a chronograph. We are gonna shoot out to the four and 500 yard distances. And we're gonna to start to build more data with the chronograph, with the actual muzzle velocities coming out of the gun and with a little bit longer of a range to really start to true our dope and get a really, really good idea of what's gonna happen. So if you guys learned something from today's video, please leave a like, a comment, uh, and maybe even subscribe if you want to. And if we missed something or didn't explain something perfectly, or if you just have like knowledge about this stuff and, and feel willing to, please like jump in the comment sections and help people start to learn and figure this stuff out. End of the day, we were all brand new shooters at one point. We've all been at the stage where we're like, what the heck does G1 mean? What the heck does G7 mean? Like, how do I even find this stuff? So let's like build a community and, and help people learn this stuff. Stay tuned because we are going to do a second video about this stuff like I've already mentioned. Go a little bit more in depth on some of the more technical stuff, you know, chronographs, kestrels, and, and how to really start to hone in on and get really precise data uh, for our rifles. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.